everyone, and welcome to the Dr. Music Podcast once again. A uh, special thank you to the subscribers, as always. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please cl click the button. Uh, you make all this possible. Today, I have Steve Skinny Felton with me of Mushroom Head. Uh, Skinny is the founder and original drummer for Mushroom Head. Uh, the band was formed in 1993, has endured all kinds of stuff over the years and heartache and loss, but is still triumphant and successful. Uh, they're out there. Uh, Mushroom Head is all set to release their ninth album. They're second on the Napalm Records label. Uh, the album is titled Call the Devil, and it gets unleashed on August 9th, and it has the most killer cover art i think i've ever seen and uh skinny's here to tell us all about the album the music the cover art and everything that goes with it skinny it's great to have you man right on man thank you for taking the time to do the interview it's really a pleasure to do it thank you yeah oh you're very welcome man and i've been looking forward to this for a long time uh love the band love the visual uh you know you're always there with that great visual the sound and vision of this band always important, always there, always helpful with the videos and the cover art. And I want to get into the cover art, first of all. Uh, that's the first thing I saw here before I listened to the record, and I immediately had sounds going in my head. Uh, and I was so excited to put that that sound on and see what this vision was going to do. It comes to life, uh, and, and it does. Uh, tell me about the cover art. How involved you are with that? So with that one, that was actually uh, a, we had a, a different, uh, we had a couple of different concept art, um, you know, cover options. And uh, we kind of collaborated more with the label on this one. And um, the label president, Thomas Caesar, actually is uh, friends with that artist, uh, Brad Armstrong. He knows him, you know, throughout doing other work together or just, you know, whatever their uh, relationship is. He said, hey, I got, I know a guy that I'd really like to see his twist on this. So the the cool thing is, and I'm not sure if he heard some of the album or not. I think he was just going off of the title and all the, you know, the last eight albums and all the past references that he had. So when we we didn't speak to him much about it, it was very much, hey, yeah, let, let's see what his take is on this title. Man. And it came back with that, and we were right away. We were like, "That's pretty cool, man." <laughs> so uh, yeah, we went with that um, versus you know some of the other concepts that we had. And we, like I said, we were really happy first time working with him. And um, again, it was very collaborative with the label. They um, Napalm Records has been nothing but great to us. They really understand the band and truly, you know, get the vision of the artist involved and uh, truly want to help. So. That was very collaborative on that on that whole album cover. Man, and that's great to hear. And, you know, it's always great to hear uh, that the record company is working with you. Because, uh, you know, there's so many times where record companies kind of work against the band sometimes. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, it's second record with Napalm. It's going well. Great news, man. Great news. Yeah. Um, that sound and vision always a factor with mushroom head music we see the videos for from the album so far pre-packaged fall in line um and you got your x factor there jackie uh she is just stunning uh she's just a gorgeous woman but other than that she she could be a, i mean she's got to be model uh puts the makeup on sells it sounds great uh she's just amazing in this in these videos uh as is the band the whole aesthetic of the band do you like making the videos are we going to see more videos well i'm really hoping we get to do more we've got quite a few ideas you know in place and you know the ability to get it done it's just a little bit of you know timing and scheduling and we'll see how the album you know performs once it's actually out but um yeah bringing up miss jackie man she's she's incredible as far as the element that she brings to the visual and the sound, you know, it's, it's a layer, it's a texture that, you know, is more than just a, a keyboard or a, you know, a guest vocalist. Like it really brings a whole another layer to the mushroom head aesthetic. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, we got a lot of bands with makeup and masks and things like that, but we don't have, they don't have a Jackie. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And, yeah. She's, she's, it's very much a compliment and contrast with her, man. And it, it, it works really, it's very interesting for us to, to, 
bring that that layer you know extra element that she brings to the table visually and sonically you know um it just adds like i said all the layers of her um in all of her talent it just it, it really lends itself to uh help the whole mushroom head aesthetic in a, in a whole new light and it's, it's very creative with, with her abilities yeah, I would imagine, you know, when you get into the studio or you're writing, uh, it's a real, you know, you can, it takes you to another level. You can do so many things. Like I hear the scream vocal with her clean vocal underneath it. And that layering there is just, you know, it's spine tingling, man. Uh, you know, I hear that and it's like, that's something that nobody else has, or, you know, they don't do it this well. Uh, it's done really, really well. Um, and, you know, when she leads the band and fronts the band with a lead vocal, she's just as great. So uh, it, it's just a great thing to have, and it really explores the textures of, of Mushroom Head for sure. Yeah, uh, some some of the stuff with, with her very much comes out hauntingly beautiful. Yeah. It's really great. It's really great. And of course, you know, I have the vision to go with it. So uh, it's just a great package that you guys have. Um, you know, I look at the masks. Uh, I look at you guys play uh, the lights, the fire, or, you know, a festival that's, you know, beating sun. I hear people, you know, that don't have the masks and stuff that just were dying on stage. They tell me you guys do all this makeup and masks. It's a lot of work, uh, folks recognize that these guys go through a lot to get these masks on and to look that cool and and that whole aesthetic have you ever thought about performing without the mask especially as a drummer you gotta be dying back there man yeah you know it, the, the thought has definitely crossed the, the mind many times <laughs> over the years but if if we were to do something like that you know that's what side projects are for and that's what you know, the, releasing something that Mushroom Head doesn't have for you. Sometimes it's overwhelmingly hot and, you know, your peripheral vision. Dark club, man, you can't see anything, you know. It's like you kind of <laughs> find your footing, especially guitar players or singers, they find their footing. They just kind of stay planted for a little while sometimes because, you know, it's like I said, with the lights, it's, it's very hard to see and breathe. The communication is tough. We have a lot of hand signals because, you, you know, there's no lip reading, so. Right. Uh, you know, wear a mask. They said it'll be fun. They said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I say it all the time. Whose idea was this? But, uh, I'm glad we do it. It keeps us entertained. And I'll tell you what: when you put a mask on and you get out there and you start performing, you definitely do take on a little bit of a different character. Um, and you just feel slightly different in the mask. It's you know, a little more free and open. You're not really worried about if you're making direct eye contact or. You know, if you're smiling right or you look cool, it's like you, you're in a whole nother world as soon yeah. as you put it on. So it definitely helps the uh, energy level when you're up there. But it also drains it because by the end of the song, when it's Arizona at 104 degrees at one in the afternoon, you're like, what the hell? <laughs> hell being the key word there. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and and i'm a photographer a concert photographer so you okay, know cool. that, one of the main reasons that i, I absolutely love the cover art uh it's just a, a, a sensational perfect photograph but you guys on stage is just a you know it's a bucket list cover uh it's a bucket list shoot uh to, to, to cover uh for sure uh you know and that masks and the makeups and and you know all of the costumes and you know the color you got the colors down the red and the black this time uh just really uh sensational man sensational uh writing for this record how did writing work for this record work uh was everybody involved did you i look at the lyric sheet on this and folks get some kind of hard copy get the vinyl uh hopefully it's got lyrics in it um the lyrics are it's the shakespeare of it man it's freaking crazy how great these lyrics are um so how did writing the record work uh did you do the bulk of it or was it collaborative in any way no it's very very collaborative and it was kind of done in sessions you know maybe three songs at a pop or you know sometimes it was just one song for like a week or 10 days and then two weeks we'd be focusing on two or three so it was just built in in different sessions and some people were at some sessions and some people weren't. Some of the tracks were like we did some file sharing on this one as well. 
Um, but, but, you know, coming out of COVID, you know, post COVID vibes, there was a lot to say. So there was some real depressing stuff. And then there was some real angry stuff, real, you know, positive and upbeat. And then, you know, you get more into that doom and gloom. So, um, like I said, COVID had a lot to do with uh, keeping us all cooped up, man. By the time we got in the studio, we were ready to go and everything went really fast every time we sat down and did it. We just didn't do a whole album at once. It, like I said, it was more collective, like you know, a couple of weeks, 10 days, focus on something, come back in a month to do two or three weeks on some more stuff. And that's kind of how this one was done in, in sections. Okay, cool. Um, now you produce Call the Devil, like you, you have all the mushroom head records really you got matt wallace uh mixing the record uh co-produced last time i think on, on a wonderful life um did you do anything different with the production you know not really other than i think we took a little more time on this one we were a little more patient and we definitely used um you know took advantage of technology as well because there's a lot of modern sounds and like over the you know course of two three years a lot of software comes out and a lot of things are just easier to to work with so um other than that it was all pretty much traditional the way we sit down and write with a you sit down with one guitar player and a drummer and just press record and let them play for an hour and then sit down and listen to that and go oh man there's a section here you know same thing with piano and drums sometimes it'll just be piano and a voice someone's got a simple melody and then we'll put some chords to it and go um so it's very collaborative and it's just what perks up the ears of everyone that's around in the studio and hey play that again yeah. um so you know it's it, where a, a lot of times we just let the music you know kind of lead us when we don't really have a plan versus you know some guys have hey i wrote this song and i want to hear it you know played through we don't really do that we just kind of sit down and whatever comes out of us is the emotion of the day or the week so to speak man that is really organic uh natural way to do things for sure uh and i love that collaboration now yeah. this mushroom had always a band that has had lineup changes over the years now this record you have a lot of returning me band members now i've heard you talk about that um and you kind of alluded to the fact that it was almost a positive thing for you like you know you, you prefer the band to change a little bit uh does it keep it fresh for you to have a few a few you know a guy leave and a guy come in and and does that is that something that you you like to work with well i mean you know it's not always the plan you know once you get used to working in a formula you hope you can kind of you know work through even more and, and bring even more to the you know to the table or let ideas get better the more you work together but doesn't always work out like that and yeah sometimes it's really exciting because you know fresh blood is fresh years and fresh excitement fresh um inspiration and then um you know i mean ultimately it's just kind of kind of the way it goes because you know here's the exciting part for me personally is i don't always know what's next that way right. i can't imagine how it's going to sound because i don't even know myself all right that, yeah, that is cool. That's cool. Uh, you know, you got the addition of Scott back here from Fantana uh, on vocals. Um, the new record seems to have a little more of a clean vocal style than than the the norm. Maybe um, a lot a, a lot more texture, I would say, on this record. Um, would you say that the addition of Scott uh, led to the direction with the vocals a little bit? Yeah, Scotty's great, man. He's got all kinds of ability as well. And, you know, he can do pretty much any voice. His clean voice is really strong. And, um, you know, we did a lot of experimenting and playing around and seeing where he blended in well with, with Steve and him and Jackie sometimes. So he's got all this ability from, you know, that the heavy, heavy scream or the heavy growl to, you know, singing clean. Um, so we did just a lot of experimenting, you know, with, with a whole new voice. You know, it's like a whole instrument. And it's like, oh, let's see what this thing can do. Let's race this guy around the, the track a couple of times. Right. And, yeah, speaking of racing around the track, the guy's amazing live. He's got just incredible energy. And, um, yeah, he's actually going to be here in the studio in a little bit. So we might he might even come in during this. Who knows? Oh, that's way, cool. looking, yeah, looking forward to seeing him today. Yeah, that I say that's great, and I love to hear that. Uh, you know, it's, it's, the, the camaraderie and, you know, like you say, that new blood – 
giving it a different sound and it makes it feel exciting for you, uh, which is, you know, you kind of need that when you've been doing it since 93, right? Uh, <laughs> you know, that, that new excitement, to, and you can hear it in the music too. Uh, it's a great record. Uh, you know, Mushroom Head, you always seem to put something together that is really a viable source of great music. Uh, this is no different. This is a great record. Um the band, the band's sound has changed a little bit over the years. Um, is the current lineup open to doing anything anything from the catalog? Uh, what can we expect from a set list on the upcoming tour? Any you know any kind of hesitation with doing anything from the past? Oh no 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 we we especially with Gravy being back, we do all all sorts of stuff from the first album to this current one. So it, it's all over the place and. It's just a matter of which ones we haven't played in a while, which sets we have a long enough time, like European set, we'll probably play 60 to 70 minutes every day. So we can change that up as we go, or we can just, you know, add, um, you know, as much as we want. We were kind of laughing. If you took two songs off of every record, there's 18 songs now. Right. We, can't, we, we don't even have a set long enough to play 18 songs. So oh. it, it's going to start getting tough as far as, all right, well, what are we, what are we going to play this time? You know, yeah. there, there's, a, you know, there's a banger off every record, maybe two that okay. we, that we absolutely love performing. So it's going to be hard this time, but yeah, you'll hear all kinds of, you know, stuff from album one to album nine. Wow. That's great, man. That's so cool. Uh, when you were going into this record, um, because you know you guys kind of switch it up each time we get a, a, a little bit of a different um sound from from mushroom it, 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 the whole catalog is mushroom head for sure uh but you know there's a little bit of a difference in each record is it there's a, a, a sway from each record uh is there a specific intention when you go into writing or recording you know do you say to yourself I'm going to put more clean vocals in this time, or, you know, we're going to have more guitar solo, or, you know, we're going to have more of Jackie in there, you know, whatever it might be. Uh, do you, is that the way you, you, was there a specific intention for this record like that? No, no. And, and, and there, there really never was in any of the approaches, you know, after doing this for so long, 30 plus years at this point, and, you know, having this many albums, if you look at, think of Mushroom Head as, you know, its own, art museum and each album is its own room and inside that room is all those songs which are sculptures or paintings or whatever media you you know you could think but if you look at it like that it all fits inside this art museum you know and each each one it's all just art so it's never really any sort of intention um of going in with hey we need a, a heavy song or we need you know a radio song now Sometimes that was the case in the past, like during the Universal days, there was, you know, pressure and, you know, the, the feeling to, hey, we need something on MTV. Right. And, you know, it, it became a little bit of task writing and you almost lost a little bit of the focus of the art and the appreciation of what you're actually doing. Yeah. So it, it's been it's been a hell of a ride over 30 years watching it go from, you know, nothing to something to something possible and then back to maybe you know, and here we are, and now I'm just content with making music and art, you know, accepting where where it is that we are, and man, I'm grateful to be here still doing it. Man, yeah, and we're grateful to have you, man. Uh, we don't care, just a killer song, it's got to be a single, <laughs> actually. Uh, you'll love the dual vocal tone, uh, you know, the, the male-female uh, trade there is just great. Uh Emptiness, another one. Uh, Faith No More vibe a little bit, maybe, and a yeah. David, David Gilmore guitar sound in there a little bit, even. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, really cool to have Gravy back. It's got to feel good for you, for sure. You have the bro back in there. Um, you know, I look at these songs, Decomposition, uh, a little bit of a system of a down reminder, maybe. Uh, Grand Gesture, uh, Shame in a Basket. These are all textured songs that are a little bit different than what we had previously, maybe. But I hear these words. Uh, Candy-coated hammers pound at the back of our fading resolve. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, the, the album's full of the lyrical content that is just masterful. It, it is like English literature. Uh, it's, it's just crazy. Um, 
You yeah, are- that that line that not to interrupt, but that line right yeah. there, that's a Steve, that's a Steve Rockhorse man. He is an absolute genius. And boy, can he twist a phrase or put something out there wow. to make you really think about things. He is just incredible writer and, and a vocalist and a person in general. But man, his writing is deep, man. It, it's twisted. It, it's just it's insane. Uh, you know, and like I say, please, you know, people get the hard copy, man, and get that lyric sheet because, yeah, I mean, it's a book in itself. It should be published as a, a book of poetry or, or something. It's 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 phenomenal. Um, UIOP, uh, a final reprieve. I see this, you know, tell me about the name of the song. It, what, it's probably my favorite track on the album. Uh, it's just, it's got it all. It's a crazy great track. Um, but I, you know, I know we had QWERTY before. These are the last four letters along the top line. Uh, how's the title come about for that one? You you nailed it right there. Man. Look at that. So that was just the working title of it? Because some of the, the 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 chords and the way things are designed kind of reference QWERTY. If you played it in a different tempo and a different, uh, you know, a sound, you would kind of get what we're talking about. But, um, yeah, so that was the working title. And we ended up just keeping it because we were like, wow, what a, what a nice little Easter egg. But I'm glad you brought that song up because that one ended up being like one of my favorites when it was complete, too. Um, it's kind of like... Nightmare Before Christmas meets The Exorcist, you know, <laughs> throw a little bit of Ozzy in there and boom, you yeah. know, it's uh, it is, man. It's it's a really it's a heavy track, but it's it's also it's got a melody that goes through it. That's just I don't know. It carries. I, there's something about that song. I, I, I can't get enough of it. That's the one I always go back to, uh, you know, and of course, we don't care is that anthemic. You know, it's just, yeah. I, I can't wait to see it live, man. That is, yeah, that, that's a wow. fun one, man. That was another gravy inspired tune. He just came up with that slutty riff right there that starts the beginning of the tune, and we were just like, oh man, that's just got a swagger and a bounce to it. Like, let's make that. So, yeah, yeah that one that was totally, totally let on by gravy. Yeah, uh, that's really, really cool. Um, is there a song or two that stand out to you as you know a little bit more special a little closer to your heart on, on this one something that you maybe feel like you went into uncharted waters you know i, I gotta say shame in a basket is definitely some fun stuff that and hallucination both of those are very dark art and they're not your traditional arrangements of of song structures uh, they're almost more of an opera and it's set in acts like act one, two, and three. If you, you know, kind of close your eyes, you can, it'll definitely take you somewhere. Uh, both of those tracks were very experimental and we didn't really know where they were going. And that's just how they turned out. <laughs> and I love that, man. I love that off the cuff, organic, natural progression of, you know, starting here and landing here and you had no idea how, that you were going to be there. Uh, yeah, yeah. That that's really adds to the uh, urgency of the album, I think, for sure. Yeah, yeah, big uh, drama, big drama. Yeah, it's it's great. It really is, man. Uh, this is a really dramatic record. Uh, I know you're a big David Lynch fan. Uh, you've had a lot of references and nods to Lynch in in the lyrics in the past, um, especially the last album. Uh, are there any nods to Lynch on Call Call the Devil? You know, I can't speak for Stevie because he could have slipped something in there that I didn't even catch. But um, no, not anything direct at, at all. But, I, you know, I, I can't say that I, I don't think about that that guy's work and, his you know, his body of work over the years. And, uh, you know, it's, it's great that you brought up, you know, a director because I, I think if people looked at what I do personally with Mushroom Head as Steve Skinny Felton, more of the director role and each one of these albums is almost like a movie and there's a cast and it's not always the same cast sometimes people come back sometimes they're around for a few movies in a row and the world that you're getting drawn into with Tarantino you know Quentin Tarantino you don't always know the movie you don't know the plot from beginning to end you don't know but you know the world you're getting pulled into it's uber violent it's exciting it's funny yeah. So if people looked at what I did a little bit more that way, they might understand my approach a little bit more. 
You know, that's a that's great. I'm so glad you said that because I mean that puts it a little more into spec perspective for me, even. Um, you know, and I thoroughly appreciate what you do what you do. But yeah, I think about Tarantino, it's a great example because people will ask me, you know, Pulp Fiction's probably my favorite movie of all time. People will ask me what is what is it about? I'm really not sure. <laughs> right. it's, it's just a world that you get pulled into and it's ultra pleasurable. It's ultra violent. It's ultra funny. Uh, right. But I really, things just happen and it's a thing. Mushroom had very similar. Now that you yeah. said that, I'm so glad yeah. you said that. Uh, yeah, because it's definitely ne never been my approach to have another Metallica or another Beatles. I didn't know what I was going to ultimately be getting into 30 years down the line. But looking back, you know, it's more clear to me that I kind of took that role than your traditional band leader or producer. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's great, man. I love that. Uh, Cause yeah, it is a, it's a fun journey to go on uh, with mushroom at it every time out, every time out. Uh, it's so appreciated, man. Uh Skinny, I know you got a busy day, man. Um, I see the band. I see a lot of hurdles that you guys have overcome. A lot of heartache, a lot of loss, um, but a lot of great times, a lot of family type stuff, uh, pulling through that stuff. Um, in that time, you know, through the dark times, through the good times, uh, ever consider ending the band? You know, no, as tired as I've been and as sick of everything that I've been, you know, who do I get to call in and say, hey, man, I'm going to be sick. Uh, you know, I'm not coming in today. Uh, that that was never really been the case. So it's really never been an option because, you know, I'm going to create music and art of some sort on some sort of medium for the rest of my life. So, you know, that, that really wasn't it. And, you know, to, to reflect on some of the tougher times when you lose people, whether it's personally or professionally or anything like that, you know, just remember you're not alone. There's all kinds of other people who are going through it and they've gone through it. And ain't the time you're really down like that, man. Just remember you've been through shit in the past and you bounce back plenty of times. So, you know, it, it's hard to think that way, but just remember who you are and you know, it'll, it'll just come naturally. Believe in yourself. That's all I've ever done. And skinny. It's great, man. I, uh... Many blessings to you, and I'm so glad you're still here with Mushroom Head, the ninth record. It's coming out August 9th. Uh, it's just uh, it's a pleasure to have you. It's a pleasure to have your music and your art out there. Uh, and thanks so much for your time, man. Uh, where can everybody pre-order this thing? Uh, pretty much over right over at Napalm Records. I think just napalmrecords.com. You can find more information at mushroomhead.com or mushroom head official at facebook and instagram and if you're looking for cool stuff go over to mrh gear awesome man i'll have all the links in the bottom here skinny it's great man uh thank you so much for your time i'll see you on thank the you. road I, you're playing the forge one of my favorite venues uh right on. Up. right on come out early man we'll hang out all right sounds great man uh i will talk you. to you have a great night thanks bro bye